Ubhayam Ubhayam Cha Cha Maya Maya Vyaktam Vyaktam Mai Mai Cha Cha Eva Eva Ubhayam Ubhayam The word Ubhayam appears twice in this word. Mm -hmm. Kritam, Kritam. Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam cha maya vyaptam, Ubayam cha maya vyaptam, Mai chai vobyam, Ubaye, Mai chai vobyam, Kritam, Mai chai vobyam, Kritam. Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Lokam chatmani Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam cha maya vyatam, Ubayam cha maya vyatam, Mai cha ubayam kritam, Mai cha ubayam kritam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Loke vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubhayam chamaya vyaptam, Ubhayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai bo vyat, chai bo vyat, Bayam vidam, Mai chai bo vyat vidam. Ladies. Loke vitaptam atmanam, Loke vitaptam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai vobayam kritam, Mai chai vobayam kritam. Lokhe vitatam atmanam, Lokhe vitatam atmanam, Lokam chatmani santatam, Ubayam chamaya maya vyaptam, Ubayam chamaya vyaptam, Mai chai vyopayam kritam, Mai chai vyopayam kritam, Loke vitaptam atmanam, Loke vitaptam atmanam, Lokam chai chatmani santatam, Lokam chamani santatam, Ubayam cha maya vyaptam, Ubayam cha maya vyaptam, Mai cha vobayam kritam, Mai cha vobayam kritam. Okay. In this material world, in this material world, vitatam, vitatam, expanded, expanded. And then in parentheses, she probably has. In the spirit of material enjoyment. Admanam, the living entity. Lokam, the material world. Cha, also. Admani, in the living entity. 
Santatam Santatam Spread Spread Ubayam Ubayam Both Both The material world of material elements and the living entity The material world of material elements and the living entity Cha Cha And, and. Maya Maya By me By me Vyaptam Vyaptam Pervaded Pervaded Mayi in me. In me. Cha, Cha also. also. Eva, Eva indeed. Indeed. Ubayam, Ubayam both of them. Both of them. Pritam, Pritam created. Were there any words that anybody didn't understand? Translation. In this world of matter, which the conditioned soul accepts as consisting of enjoyable resources. The conditioned soul expands, thinking that he is the enjoyer of the material world. Similarly, the material world expands in the living entity as a source of enjoyment. In this way, they both expand, but because they are my energies, they are both pervaded by me. As the Supreme Lord, I am the cause of these effects, and one should know that both of them rest in me. In this world of matter, you can repeat it. In this world of matter, which the conditioned soul, which the conditioned soul, soul accepts as con consisting of enjoyable resources, the conditioned soul expands. The conditioned soul expands, thinking that he is the enjoyer of the material world. Similarly, the material world expands in the living entity as a source of enjoyment. In this way, they both expand. But because they are my energies, they are both pervaded by me. As the Supreme Lord, I am the cause of these effects. And one should know that both of them rest in me. One should know that both of them rest in me. Purple. The Mayavada philosophy sees everything as being equal in quality with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or the Supreme Brahman, and therefore sees everything as worshipable. This dangerous theory of the Mayavada school has turned people in general towards atheism. On the strength of this theory, one thinks that he is God, but this is not a fact. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Mayam tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina. The fact is that the entire cosmic manifestation is an expansion of the Supreme Lord's energies, which are manifested in the physical elements and the living entities. The living entities wrongly consider the physical elements to be resources meant for their enjoyment, and they think themselves to be the enjoyers. However, neither of them is independent. They are both energies of the Lord. The original cause for the material energy and spiritual energy is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, although the expansion of the Lord's energies is the original cause, one should not think that the Lord himself has expanded in different ways. To condemn the theories of the Mayavadis, the Lord clearly says in Bhagavad Gita, Matstani sarvabhutani na chaham dvesh avastita All living beings are in me, but I am not in them. Everything rests upon him, and everything is but an expansion of his energy. But this does not mean that everything is as worshipable as the Lord himself. The material expansion is temporary, but the Lord is not temporary. The living entities are parts and powers, excuse me, the living entities are parts of the Lord, but they are not the Lord himself. The living entities in this material world are not inconceivable, but the Lord is. The theory that the Lord's energies, being expansions of the Lord, are as good as the Lord, is mistaken. The verse once again. In this world of matter, which the conditioned soul accepts, which the conditioned soul accepts as the consisting of enjoyable resources, the 
conditioned soul expands, thinking that he is the enjoyer of the material world. Similarly, the material world expands in the living entity as the source of enjoyment. In this way, they both expand. But because they are my energies, they are both pervaded by me. As the Supreme Lord, I am the cause of these effects, and one should know that both of them rest in me. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Tashwamitana Mena Tasai Shishwagena Shri Chaitanya Mahavishtam Stapitam Vinadutare Vayam Vakadayam Dadati Sadati Ramika Pandeham Shri Guru Sri Tanayana Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahadana Gadatam Nitamaktam Sadeevam Sadvaitam Sadvaitam Parijana Sadvaitam Krishnatvaitam Nirivam Shri Radha Krishna Dhanam Sahadana Nita Shri Radha Nitam Sadhan He Krishna Karna Sindhu Nina Vandra Jagatpate Aumesha Gopika Kantara Rakanta Namaste Sapta Kanchana Gaurangi Rai Vrindava Sushri Krishna Bhavanshri Devi Kami Vali Priyai Panchakalpa Rubyascha Vipika Sindhu Devacha Atikana Bhavani Devyaisya Vaishnava Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Radha Shri Vasa Guru Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pacharni Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paskachari Sitarni So here in this verse, although Srila Prabhupada doesn't mention it uh, directly, uh, we see the effects of false ego. Uh, the false ego means identity, and false means something which is not. <clears throat> so false ego in the material world has gives us the understanding that I'm something other than what I am. The real ego, the real, ego means identity. The real identity of the living entity is explained by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Jivara Sarapoya Krishna Nityadas. That the living entity is an eternal servant of Krishna. Now, it mentioning here about conditioned souls, and the conditioned souls take a look at the material world around them, and they think that they are the enjoyer of these activities. And Prabhupada mentioned, not Prabhupada, but Sri Vyasadeva mentions here in this particular verse that the, the material world expands also. And the, but, but, and the word but is used there by Lord Krishna. But, because they are my in energies, they are both pervaded by me. So, of course, when you use the word but, that means that there's a, a, a different understanding there. So the idea is that we living entities, it, we may, through the influence of false ego, look at the world as something which is for me to enjoy. But, as Krishna says here, they are both his energies and they're both pervaded by, by him. So, better than looking at the material world as something for me to enjoy, we should look at the material world as being pervaded by Krishna. And being pervaded by Krishna and then also understanding that I am eternal servant of Krishna, then I can take the material world and use it for Krishna, rather than use it for my own enjoyment. Because the false ego will influence us to think that I am the enjoyer. Now, the Prabhupada mentions 
that the living entity, by nature, he's an enjoyer. But it's a question of how we're enjoying. We can also enjoy as being part and parcel of Krishna. And we can enjoy being the part of Krishna, and we can enjoy also serving Lord Krishna. And engaging that material energy, which the conditioned soul thinks as his thing to enjoy, we can offer it in Krishna's service for his enjoyment. And we can also enjoy in that way. It's not that the living entity is not an enjoyer. We, we are enjoyer. But it's a question of how you enjoy. And the idea is that a devotee of the Lord, he learns how to enjoy by giving Krishna enjoyment. Um, and trying to use everything, say, in the material world. We're here in the material world, so the material energy is there. Uh, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhumir apana lo vayu kamano buddhane vacha. Uh, that there's earth, uh, earth, air, water, fire, and ether. This is my inferior material energy. And then there's also the living entities, which are Krishna's marginal energy. We are different from the material energy. This material energy is inert, uh, more or less without consciousness. Of course, you can't say completely without consciousness because. Lord Paramatma is there, in the center of every atom and in our hearts. Uh, he is so kind that he accompanies us uh, through. He, he comes with us through our whole sojourn here in the material world. He keeps us company and he tries to help us to become more and more Krishna conscious, so to, to come back to him. Uh, so. Uh, we're not we're not alone. We're actually, we're never alone. The Lord is there in our heart, and we shouldn't ever think that we're alone, because He's actually there. Uh, is a question of how we can uh, associate with Him, uh, remember Him, and uh, get help from Him. The spiritual master is considered to be the external manifestation of super soul. So. Krishna helps us within, and Krishna helps us without. As a spiritual master, we get instructions, we get Shastric instructions. And as the Lord within the heart, we also get direction. Srila Prabhupada once said in a class also that he, he doesn't help just the devotees, he helps everyone. And for a materialist, he might say, he might say, uh, Prabhupada mentioned this on a particular tape, um, you wanted to enjoy this for so long, you wanted to do this, do it now. So, <laughs> somebody, somebody has to go somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So, the idea is that um, we should view, instead of the uh, material world as a source of enjoyment for us, we should view it as a, a means, a way of pleasing Krishna, giving Krishna enjoyment. And then in that way, we can remain Krishna conscious, we can remain aware of Krishna, and we can remain unentangled with uh, the material world as a source of enjoyment. Now, Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita that by contemplation of the objects of the senses, one develops attachment. And from attachment, lust develops. And from lust, comes anger and then bewilderment of memory and so in that way we fall down into the material pool. So the idea is that if we're going to contemplate the, sen the objects of the senses, we should contemplate them as Krishna's energy and then to be engaged in Krishna's service and then in that way uh, we can remain, uh, hopefully remain, free from the influence of false ego and free from having the material energy expand in us and remain aware of Krishna pervading the material energy and pervading, as it says here, they are both pervaded by me. So, uh, he's pervaded us by the, his presence as super soul and he's pervaded the material energy in the form of Bhagavan Paramatma. So, Lord, of course, Lord, they're both Lord Paramatma. So, 
Prabhupada mentions here, the fact is that the entire cosmic manifestation is an expansion of the Supreme Lord's energies, which are manifested in the physical elements and the living entities. The living entities wrongly consider the physical elements to be resources meant for their enjoyment, and they think themselves to be the enjoyers. However, neither of them is independent. They are both energies of the Lord. So this is important for us to understand that I'm a spirit soul. I'm part and parcel of Krishna. I am not the enjoyer of the material energy. I am uh, trying, uh, or, or we could try and develop the, the attitude that I'm here to give Krishna enjoyment. And I can take that material energy and I can offer it to Krishna and I can engage that material energy in Krishna's service. And then in that way, uh, I become rightly situated. I become rightly situated in the sense that I'm seeing this as Krishna's energy, I'm seeing Krishna, and I'm engaging that material energy in Krishna's service. <coughs> so Prabhupada, uh, in the verse also, he uh, explains about the deficiencies of the Mayavadi, Mayavada philosophy. And Prabhupada mentions at the very beginning of the purport, they see everything as being equal in quality with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then Prabhupada at the end of the purport says, the theory that the Lord's energies being expansions of the Lord are as good as the Lord is mistaken. So we have to differentiate between ourselves and the Lord and the material energy and the Lord. And this is, of course, explained by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita when he explains about the material energy, that this is my inferior energy. And then we, the living entities, we're superior energy. We're conscious. We are we're conscious of so many aspects of the material energy. We're, con we're trying to be conscious of Krishna and we're trying to remember Krishna. And so, in that way, then, we can develop the attitude of not being independent, but, Prabhupada says here in the purport, however, although the expansion of the Lord's energies is the original cause, one should not think that the Lord himself has expanded in different ways. To condemn the theory of the Mayavadis, the Lord clearly says in Bhagavad Gita, Matstani sarva bhutani na chaham avastita. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. So Krishna is present with us in one sense, and he's but but he's not, he's not us. We are separate from Krishna. We are separate living entities. We're su superior energy, but we're also marginal energy. And the example of, that's given of the marginal energy is that uh, sometimes you may go to the ocean and you see that there's the ocean here, there's the land here, and there's a certain area where the ocean comes up and washes that's wet and it's not land, it's not sea, but it's in between. And that's our position, we're marginal energy. So. And as Prabhupada mentions in his, the first record that he made, that, that, that we are now living in an incompatible situation. We are spirit souls and we actually belong together with Krishna, but now we're in contact with material energy and this creates an incompatible situation. And we should be hooked up with the spiritual energy and then we're uh, in, a, in a position of being Krishna conscious. So this is the idea. And the idea is also that uh, Krishna says, all beings are in me, but I am not in them. So Krishna maintains his separate personality. We have our personalities, Krishna has his personality. And uh, the personality of Krishna, he remains separate from the material energy, he remains a little bit separate from us. Or he allows us, if we have the desire, to try to enjoy the material, and try to be the enjoyer, that we can come here into the material world and try to be the enjoyer. But the idea is for us to learn that I'm not the enjoyer of the material energy, I'm not the material energy, I'm the spiritual energy, and I belong with Krishna. And so in that way to return back to our original Krishna consciousness, back to, and eventually return back 
to the spiritual world in, and to act, re, react in uh, our relationship, react in the sense that we may have left our relationship with Krishna and that we can come back to that. So this is the, the idea here that, that we should understand that Krishna is pervading the material energy, he's pervading also, he's pervading, not exactly pervading us, but he's present with us as a super soul. And then in this way, we should remember Krishna and take that material energy and engage it in Krishna's service. Prabhupada says here, the material expansion is temporary, but the Lord is not temporary. The living entities are parts of the Lord, but they are not the Lord himself. So, uh, that, of course, we are in quality one with Krishna, but we're also very tiny parts. So, the tiny part, he should come under the shelter of Krishna. And so, when we do that, then we're nicely situated, then we're properly situated. So this is the idea here uh, that, that's uh, being explained here by Srila Prabhupada and uh, Srila Vyasadeva. So I'll re read the verse over once again. In this world of matter, which the conditioned soul accepts as consisting of enjoyable resources, the conditioned soul expands, thinking that he is the enjoyer of the material world. Similarly, the material world expands in the living entity as a source of enjoyment. In this way, they both expand, but because they are my energies, they are both pervaded by me. As the Supreme Lord, I am the cause of these effects, and one should know that both of them rest in me. So in that way, if we, push, if we do, as Krishna says here, if we understand that Krishna is pervading, and that he's the cause of these effects, then we can be we can remember Krishna and we can remember our relationship with Krishna that we have. We may not remember our exact relationship with Krishna, but we can remember that I'm part and parcel of Krishna. And then we can also take the material energy and engage it in Krishna's service. And then that way we won't be so strongly affected by the idea that I'm the enjoyer of this material. Thank you. Questions, comments, corrections, observations, realizations? Yeah, the, uh, said here the material energy expands into the living entity. That means the living entity is influenced by the material energy. Yes. It identifies with it like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, the same idea that, that by contemplation of the objects of the senses one develops attachment. Mm -hmm. then, then lust, anger, greed and all those other things come. Mm -hmm. So we can contemplate the objects of the senses, but we should see the objects of the senses in relation to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we remain mm -hmm. above the influence, or above the influence of thinking that I'm the enjoyer of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, the living entity expands into the material energy, so it seems that this always happens. It, it has to happen. No? Well, it happens to those souls who are conditioned. Yeah. See, the idea is that the, the Krishna is mentioning here, which the conditioned soul accepts as consisting of enjoyable resources. Mm -hmm. So, although we, in the material world, very often, there's the Nityabhada and there's the Nityamukta. Mm -hmm. There's the when we're conditioned soul, then we're considered to be eternally conditioned. Mm -hmm. Of course, then when we become free, then we're considered Nityamukta. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to we may not be exactly you know we may not be exactly on the platform of always seeing Krishna, but this mm -hmm. is a the process of Krishna consciousness is to become cleanse. Mm -hmm. The process of Krishna consciousness is a purification process where we, whereby we can become freed from the influence of the material energy upon us. Mm -hmm. And we can become under Krishna's control. Mm -hmm. So this is, the, and, and it hap doesn't happen all at once, you know, it's not just a boom! <coughs> mm -hmm. no. Oh, I'm Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes we're, we're Krishna conscious, sometimes we're more Krishna conscious, sometimes we're less Krishna conscious. And so the idea is to... Surati. Good morning. So the idea is to, <laughs> to become purified, accept the purification process, and then uh, we'll gradually, gradually, more and more and more become aware of Krishna mm-hmm. and uh, conscious of Krishna conscious of Krishna working in our lives because the Lord the Lord wants us to come back and uh, if we are submissive then we can let Krishna can work mm-hmm. on us yeah. and we can become more pure of course you know we have we Prabhupada said in Krishna consciousness there's three P's patience mm-hmm. perseverance and prasad yeah. <laughs> so we but, have to yeah. bring forward perseverance, the, prasada, and first, first one. Patience. Patience. Perseverance and prasada. Patience, perseverance, and prasada. So we have to bring forward the patience and the perseverance, mm-hmm. and Krishna will bring forward the prasada. Yeah. Um, we were talking about our relationship to Krishna. And then you kind of uh, corrected you a bit, a little bit, uh, okay. and by saying we all have a relationship. So we just understand that there is, because we all have a relationship. First of all, the fact that we all have a relationship to Krishna, we may know it, we may don't know, yeah. we may not know it, but we do. Then the second uh, is that we actually, by the process of Krishna consciousness, we actually understand and realize and, and experience the fact yeah. that we do have a relationship to Krishna. Yeah. But then there is what kind of relationship we have to him. The kind of relationship we have, how are we related to him. Yeah. Not that we are related, but how we are related. Yeah. And, and then, even, even though we have our material bodies still, we can actually act in that relationship. Yes. Yeah. But then, this particular how we are related to him, um, because I suppose that each devotee is related to Krishna in a different manner. Yeah. Maybe it's in some cases in a similar manner, but still it's very individual, I yeah. guess. And then, is it that the relationship we feel we have with Krishna, that's developing with Krishna, is that actually, or is it something that we're just making up and well, we wish, a wish fulfilling, a, you yeah. know, we wish that it would be like this, and we're trying to live this, or is it actually a natural thing that we will, in the course of time, the relationship that's kind of manifesting, with Krishna, is that actually the relationship we do have with him, uh, or is it just a, a Well, yeah, thing? sometimes we, sometimes we're, like, <clears throat> sometimes we have in our practice of devotional service certain things that we like to do or who we come, we become good at. So then we think, oh, well, maybe in the spiritual world. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the in the spiritual world. But, yeah. but, but, <laughs> It's, it's a, as far as I understand, it's, it's something which uh, will be revealed to us. <clears throat> and not only that, but in the course of time, one accepts the guidance of one of the inhabitants of Vrindavan, whether it's a piece of grass, or it's a motherly relationship with Krishna, or it's a friendly relationship with Krishna, or it's a loving relationship with Krishna. Then in the course of time, uh, the affinity is comes the affinity comes out and we actually take shelter of, of, a, of a resident of Vrindavan to develop that relationship or redevelop that relationship and then uh, yeah it's it, in previous times when one accepted initiation from a spiritual master the spiritual master would tell you what your relationship with Krishna was we don't. We, since the time of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta stopped this because it wouldn't be proper. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. so. And he explained that in the course of devotional service, then we will understand this. So we may have a certain affinity now 
due to our conditioned nature. Uh, see, we're, we're, con we're still conditioned by the own ignorance, passion, and goodness. And then we, the idea is by the process of devotional service to become free from ignorance and to become free from passion and become to the mode of goodness. And then to go beyond the mode of goodness to the mode, the mode of pure goodness, Sudhasattva. So we may have certain tinges and influences from, of the modes of material nature still in our devotional service. So then, then we might think, oh, in my, in, where I perform devotional service, I make the burfi every week for the deities. And everybody says, oh, your burfi is so nice. So, so, I make different flavors of burfi uh, each week. So then I might be thinking, well, you know, in the spiritual world, maybe I'm making burfi for Krishna. But uh, th that may still be an influence of the, mo the modes of material nature upon me in my uh, you know, because there are different, different kinds of Brahminical persons, there's yeah. many, many different kinds of persons who are influenced by the modes of passion, and so we may be still influenced that way. So it's a little bit difficult for us to transpose what we're doing here to there. Okay. So when you say it's a revelation, and then we take guidance from a particular inhabitant of Vrindavan that is uh, in, introducing or guiding us in that particular relationship. Yeah. No, that's how, this that's how, that, uh, I haven't realized that myself, but I've heard that from devotees, that okay. this is the process. So the idea of the revelation, is it the, like a bingo effect, that uh, in a dream-like kind of a thing, it's going to be shown to you from an outside influence, uh, how hard this is going to be? I think it's that, that Krishna sees that we're developing, yeah. and then Krishna reveals. That's my understanding. So, and at that time, I guess we will also get to know the person who's supposed to guide us in that particular it's, it's a question of <clears throat> we have to change our consciousness that's the whole process of krishna consciousness and the, the idea of changing our consciousness to being to being a servant of krishna and being engaged in a relationship with krishna and of course krishna wants us back and it's just that we have to develop the the, the, the mentality of coming back to yeah. Like, for example, yesterday, or the day before, when we talked about this, you know, I mentioned, for example, that because I'm a woman, I never get to massage properly. Mm -hmm. But this idea of, because he said, is going to exist. So I thought, so if I serve it, it's going to try to do something with his movement and everything, I'm actually massaging his feet. This is like a, you know, like a kind yeah. of relationship. So, um, in, in our relationship to Krishna, there is also, I guess, a, 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 over time it shows what kind, in what direction it goes. Some are neutral to Krishna, yeah. some are, have a parental attitude to Krishna. Yeah. And all these Sometimes also when I'm looking at, uh, uh, say, uh, the Krishna art book, I, I look at a p mm -hmm. particular picture and I think, <laughs> oh, or I see it. There's a there's a particular Krishna picture of Krishna in the Krishna art book. It was, uh, it's a uh, Shamsundar. It's so beautiful. And it's so attractive. So then I might think that wow, it'd be really nice to be you. But then sometimes I also think that oh gee, Mother Jasoda, she's such a nice devotee, and then. I think, then I look at a picture of Krishna having lunch with the Calvary boys. Yeah. Ooh, that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, we have the choice, and we don't really know what would have yeah, the best. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. then, then, I, then I think, that, okay, well, when, it's, when I'm ready, Krishna will reveal. That's how I think. Because also when we say, Even someone as great as Lord Brahma, he was thinking that, oh, well, gee, if I could just be a piece of grass <laughs> outside of the top, then when the gopis come, they could step on me. So he, here's Lord Brahma. He's the, the big, biggest person in the universe, and he's thinking like that. So, so some of us may also be in, in Vaikuntha. Uh, I don't know. 
But I, I don't know right now. I don't know. I'm not aware of what my relationship with Krishna is. So uh, I can't exactly tell you, you know, how it goes. So. Uh, and uh, sometimes we have stereotyped kinds of answers for things. You know, mm -hmm. in Krishna consciousness, there are Krishna conscious answers, but they are also very much stereotyped. Yes. You're just repeating them because they've been said so yes. many times, but in the meaning of it at that moment, it's sometimes, uh, like for example, when you say, just make Krishna your husband, for example. Yes. You know, for me, I, I, I feel this, this is a stereotyped kind of answer you give yeah. to pacify them. Yeah. You know, what does yeah, it really yeah. mean then? You know, yeah. really, what yeah. does it mean? What does it have to do with what we're just talking about just yeah. now? Yeah. You know, so that's... Yeah. I, personally, this is the way I think, because your prophet never put any emphasis on, on that particular thing about who we are in the spiritual world. He yeah. actually, he completely tried to, you know... Yeah. Yeah, not speculate. Yeah, he tries to take us away from that. Not, don't worry about that, don't worry yeah. about that. So my personal feeling is that if we do eventually get to the spiritual world in whichever life or whatever, that immediately we will see Shiro Prabhupada or wherever Shiro Prabhupada is, because mm. he's always with us all the time. He said that, 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 that he never forgets us, he never leaves us, he's always conscious. Of us, and and the devotees ask, is this does the spiritual master come back for the devotees? And he he said yes. Yeah. And he said actually, I think one one time I heard that he doesn't leave this material universe until all his devotees are completely Krishna conscious. You know, he's still within this universe, but it's built in the spiritual world. But also he can go between both <coughs> yeah. the devotee. But as soon as we go to the spiritual world. Prabhupada takes us by the hand and introduces us to Krishna. Mm. And that way we will automatically be revealed of who we are, you know, what relationship we have. But, to but we see in some pastimes that some devotees actually mm -hmm. understand what their relationship with Krishna is. They have been. Hmm? They have been able to understand. Yes. We see in the. In, in, uh, uh, it was a, there was a pastime where the dev devotee of his spiritual master, he he was actually considered to be more advanced than his spiritual master, mm -hmm. and uh, he he was the one that was uh, named. Uh, he had the uh, was written on it. He had the special tilak, mm -hmm. so it mentions in that particular story that he went back to his relationship with Krishna, and he. Act, and he, he got some instruction from Srimati Radharani mm -hmm. and he got a uh, special m mercy from Srimati Radharani and uh, so and then he came back and then his spiritual master understood that uh, this is a very he's a very a very advanced disciple mm -hmm. uh, I, I have it's in, in the story it's in the the, um, the little book by Satyaraj about the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and so he was actually, well, although he had his material body, he knew what his relationship with Krishna was. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, it's possible for us, even though we have, still have a material body, still, it's possible for us to understand what our relationship with Krishna is, even in this life. Yeah. Well, Prabhupada did say you can see Krishna, you can talk with Krishna. Yeah. That's a pretty high stage. So sometimes there's special mercy, sometimes there's special kindness, sometimes there's uh, uh, there's there's sometimes there are very advanced devotees, and uh, they uh, manifest, and they uh, he was he that particular devotee was given special special mercy, mm -hmm. so you know, it, uh, that's my understanding. That uh, my my understanding may or may not be. You see, when we we, uh, we can try and under, uh, we can understand some things theoretically, and then, but then when we actually have realization, then we completely but understand. That's it. a particular uh, what they call an example of someone 
we're reading that in in our scriptures, but actually amongst us in our Hare Krishna movement, have we seen anyone get that far? I, I haven't seen a devotee that's on that level. Um, I've seen hints, You've seen hints of some of my god brothers who yeah. are. Mm -hmm. And generally, it's not really being made public, really. It's not yeah. really known. It's not really being talked about it or the person. Just the, the, for one example. Uh, in uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's life. Um, in Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's you life. Know, I have to apologize because Vajana needs to leave and I have to go out to okay. give him breakfast, so I'm sorry for. And mm -hmm. You can continue talking, but mm -hmm. I will have to okay. leave. I'm sorry for that. Uh, in in Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's time, um, some of his disciples actually understood what his position was in relation to Krishna. Yeah. They understood that he was a specific gopi. Mm -hmm. And so these particular persons, they must have had some, you know, very deep realization. Yeah. Yeah, so there may be... <coughs> I mean, I'm not talking about Srila Bhaktisiddhanta or Bhaktivinoda Thakur or even Srila Prabhupada. I'm convinced that they are completely God conscious, but yeah. Within our society, within our Hare Krishna movement, I would not have said that I see someone who is on that level. Um, the, the nature of someone who's spiritually advanced is not is not that he would make it public. Yeah. But some of my god brothers, I find, are very advanced, more more, more advanced than myself. And so I'm not, but I would have to just, I'm not in the position where I can understand what their position is. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so. like, you know, Shira Prabhupada, right? Shira Prabhupada was 100% God conscious. And also, also you could say he didn't reveal it to us, but on occasions, yes. on occasion, definitely 100%, we knew yeah. that Shira Prabhupada. Um, my limited very limited experience uh, mm -hmm. is that um, I have found Niranjana Swami Niranjan? Niranjana Swami yeah. to be very advanced mm -hmm. and he pleased Sri the Prabhupada a lot yeah. by his preaching in Russia yeah. and by his maintaining you know very Krishna conscious standard I haven't had so much association with him yeah um, he encouraged me mm -hmm. by saying, you know, it actually works. Mm -hmm. The process of Krishna consciousness actually works. Mm -hmm. Which says to me that it worked for him because he saw how it worked for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not saying that he's, you know, yeah. completely Krishna conscious. I'm not saying that he's fully realized. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he's more... <laughs> <laughs> He's. I consider him to be more advanced than myself. Mm. Well, I, I would say myself personally that this process of Krishna consciousness absolutely works because I, you know, that I've been able to stay with it mm. all this time. I have a, a very strong attachment to the chanting and but everything. for some devotees also, they may leave Krishna consciousness, mm -hmm. and Sri, at the time of death, Sri the Prabhupada will return to them. I know. Yeah. Uh, Prithu Bhutra. Prithu Bhutra. He was in the hospital and said, Oh, Prabhupada, you've come. Prabhupada, you have come. Yeah. Have come. Something yeah. like that. Someone, uh, one of the persons that was with him at the time, um, or his mother, I'm not quite sure, but, he, but they came and told the devotees on the street that mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, was it either his mother or then we have that also, mm -hmm. also that story about that Irish girl it's in a little book mm -hmm. that I read. and she seemed to be very much in her relationship with Krishna yeah. although her body was racked with all kinds mm -hmm. of sicknesses and diseases mm -hmm. but I, he, he wrote that book and then he put a little bit of a disclaimer and the second part of it, mm -hmm. 
where he said that you may have difficulty accepting this. So, but anyway, I accepted what he wrote, and I accepted that uh, she, that this this lady seemed to have been yeah. acting in her relationship with Krishna. Mm -hmm. I've seen that book here, but um, I'm, which book? The book about the the girl in Ireland. Uh -huh. Who? It's in the It's in the guru room. It's in the what? In the guru room. There's a. It's in the room that you were in yesterday. Yeah. In that room you were in yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take a look at that book and, and see what you think. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm because it, at the time of the, you know when the, when the body is getting ready to die, uh, there was also the girl in uh, Vancouver, mm -hmm. who at the time of death was she was very much worshiping Tulsi Devi, and then at the time of death she said, "Oh, well, I have to go." She was speaking to her husband. "I have to go now." Shumati, the, the real Srimati Tulsi Devi is here. Mm. Mm. And also, so. and also Madhavisa, when he left his body, uh -huh. because Madhavisa was all, always loved Jagannath, you know, uh -huh. and that, and he, and the Devaji, he would say to the Devaji, just like you know, an hours before he left, and he was going, oh, the Brahman, he's bought so much Prashadam, he's come with all this Prashadam. And the Devaji is going, what Brahman, what Prashadam? <laughs> and he said, oh, so nice, they've made all the Rangoli on the floor. It's all the Rangoli. And he could see it, but no one else could. Yeah. Because, yeah, he was going. He was a very special soul by the best. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, that was at the end of their life. Yeah, at the end yeah. of their life. But I mean, during, like you're saying, yeah. there are, but I haven't but seen... It, uh, if it's... It's conceivable that at the end of their life, mm. that if maybe someone is very surrendered, very mad. Mm. He could be in that position even before he leaves his body. Yeah. Mm. But I, I'm, uh, I'm not in a position to actually understand, mm. you know, someone who's more advanced than myself. Mm. What would be the, the fate of a person? unless they come back to Krishna, but they've left Krishna consciousness and they've kind of gone a little bit on the Mayavadi level, you know, that there is no Krishna and it's all, it's only you, that, that everything, it's all up to, up to you, whatever's going to happen in your life and everything that's happening is because of yourself, you know. What would, what would be the, the, um, what would be the destination for such a person that's, you know... Has a tendency towards my body? Yeah. Well, if they're... If they're convinced that they don't want to come back to this material world. Mm. They know that this material world is not the place to be, but in, in a way their whole... Well, what they're thinking right now is my body. Well, maybe they'll go to the Brahman. 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 Maybe. To be the But I can, I can only speculate. Yeah. Because yeah. I, yeah. I, I... I'll probably just talk about it a bit in these books. I, I should just try to find out about it. Mm. Yeah. On one side they like Benelman, and then the other side they talk about Krishna and, and refer to the Bhagavad Gita and, and Prabhupada, things... Prabhupada said that things are Bhakti Siddhanta Sarah is what he said. But on one side they're like that, and on the other side they're a bit on the Mayavadi side. Yeah. Well, there may be tinges. Yeah. Just, I guess, association with the Vedis, some purification yeah. will come. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Jim and Anna, very nice. Well, thank you for listening. I never think about what I am in the spiritual world, but I, I love to see those pictures of Krishna where he's got his arm around the Sarabi cow. Uh -huh. And I think, oh gee, if I could only just have Krishna do that to me. <laughs> That's the way I think.
Yeah, well, uh, at the same time, we have to consider that um, our relationship with Krishna is different from our conditional experience. Yes. We got to know. 